if yeah, you still I, want I, I want to. But we're going to get Robert Koss. Uh, you know, we're just going to give it a little room here to let him social distance away from all the controversial things we were just saying. <laughs> we're going to give you an audio six feet. <laughs> well, you know, some people. Uh, Robert Koss, uh, GFT. Uh, good morning, Rob. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Rob. How are you doing? I am doing well. How about you? Are you feeling well? Um, a little upset. <laughs> oh. But medically, I'm fine. Okay. Okay. Because okay. we might be able to, you know, make some phone calls and see if you can get a room or something. Yeah. If you're not feeling well. <laughs> well, you know, I, I thought about that. They, they, they're paying for these rooms. They're vacant. Let's all go use them. Hey, we got a homeless. We can't get the homeless at the sale. Let's go. There we go. That's the use. Put the homeless there. I'm down for that. Or, you know, these first responders who don't want to go home to their families because they're scared they got exposed, uh, you know, maybe we need a bigger facility for them. Well, that's a good idea, too. Mm-hmm. Better than Anything's better than just leaving them empty and paying for them, right? Right. Yeah, so, Robert, we wanted to bring you on to just kind of uh, wade through this whole hazard pay, the double, double pay. time. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is GFT's take on what government employees who are currently working, essential GovGuan workers who are working during this uh, pandemic public health emergency, what does the GFT think that they're entitled to in terms of compensation? Um, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a very good question. Um, when employees were, uh, essential employees were initially identified, it has to go to work and face the COVID virus head on, uh, while other employees were allowed to stay home and uh, you know take care and spend time with their families. Uh, we began receiving a lot of calls uh, from these public essential public employees. Um, we ask that everybody cooperate with the governor. Uh, we ask that everybody do what they can and let's let's pull together to defeat the virus. Um, the important thing at the time was that everybody continues to get paid. That that was the initial plan. And then uh, later on, as the emergency dissipates or even ends, uh, we could then focus on the lawful and legal entitlement for essential workers to receive double their regular rate of pay plus what they're calling differential we used to call it hazardous duty pay so double their rate of pay plus hazardous duty pay for all hours worked during the emergency period well we're not out of the emergency period yet so we're still in that phase where we're asking everybody to continue to put forward that effort but we're under a lot of pressure now because may 4 may 5 I suspect today, later today, the governor's going to say, we're reopening the government. Um, I know she said little by little, so maybe it'll only be a partial opening. I don't know. Um, But uh, what's going to happen is the governor wants to retain her emergency powers. And if she retains her emergency powers, she has to retain the emergency designation. And that's going to cause employees to remain entitled to double their regular rate of pay as long as that emergency declaration is in place. So, you know, the, the problem is about to fester. The problem is about to get worse. You know, the governor says she's got 36 mil, or it's a $36 million expense. Well, we, we've been in this thing for, what, about six, seven weeks? So that's about a tenth of the year. So that's about $100 million the government would normally spend during this period of time. Uh, she's received 117, I understand, of 141. Um, I disagree that there is not money. Uh, this administration has denied public employees their pay uh, relevant to differential pay in every instance since they took office. This is not new. Um, I came to them when they started, and they said, you know, we will not stand for injustice of the previous administration. Well, denying employees differential pay was one of the injustices of the previous administration. I came to them and helped, and those problems are still uh, out there today, unresolved, and and now this. So this is not new. Denying employees uh, differential pay is uh, uh, an ongoing practice of this administration. Um, I really thank Joe San Augustine for stepping up now and following. We appreciate the legislation. Uh, Bill 326, um, that needs to be over an override uh, of the veto. Um, but uh, we're also going to offer Joe you know, any assistance we can to help him. Mm-hmm. In Bill 326, this, um, you, you said the law allows for the double, the double pay currently, but 
Bill 326, there's that sliding scale of differential yeah. pay, the 25%, the 15 the, the whatever, 10%. Is that um, in law also, or is that new? Yeah, the... Uh the way the way the uh, hazard pay was restructured uh, required that in order to get it, there would have to be some notification from an agency head. And this process uh, that we went through, where the governor outlined who's going to get what. So you know, I, I would say that's all fine and good. Um, I think that the government followed the hazard pay policy, um, but it it doesn't waive the emergency pay. Mm -hmm. You know, when when everybody else stays home and I have to go out there and work. Uh, in a typhoon and go up in a bucket truck in condition one, you know, I, I would expect, you know, that I would be rewarded with some kind of higher rate of pay. And I know all our public employees uh, anticipated uh, that those who were essential would receive that, that sort of pay. And, and you know, changing the, changing the game or, or <laughs> changing the rules or coming back with a lower rate of pay later on down the road, that's, that's wrong. Yeah, I was wondering what you thought of that because it's like I keep hearing all the government employees saying we're going to get our double pay, we're going to get our double pay. And in some of these households where you have an essential government of Guam worker who is uh, the only working person in that house, maybe the wife uh -huh. is furloughed, laid off or whatever. So, I mean, this isn't like some freebie. This is something they've gotten, they're expecting, they're risking them, their, themselves and their family by going out there. And um, instead of the double pay, the governor offers up an executive order with that sliding. I mean, it seemed like a bait and switch, but it was just. Right. I feel like people knew though; they knew they're going to get the double pay. So when the governor because that like, was already in law, exactly. And then some of those employees were working, you know, four twelve-hour shifts, obviously more than forty hours in a week, and just bringing home their base pay. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Yeah, there, there's a problem here. I don't know. You know, are we possessions of the government or is it the people's government, you know, because they're treating us like possessions. Mm -hmm. Have you heard, because um, the vice speaker was on and she said that she had heard that some of the autonomous agencies had received their double pay. Um, I, I have not verified with them, but I, I can tell you this, um, you know, for all my complaints about the utility companies, um, they have a good track record in the past of properly compensating their employees during an emergency period. Uh, they provide double pay and uh, nobody's really been getting hazardous duty pay until now it's on the table. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, as far as the double pay goes, yeah, they, they have power generation, things like that. These people are being uh, compensated. And um, so, you know, I, I, I haven't verified relative to the COVID Mm -hmm. um, I did talk to them early on because I had heard that possible power generation employees may be required to sleep at the power plant. So I wanted to understand that better. Were they? Uh, only if it gets to the point where, you know, there's going to be an absolute lockdown and they right. would not be able to yeah. come in or go out mm -hmm. to work, you know, in a real severe situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe GPA did plan for a worst case scenario. So are you planning to see a surge of... Uh, uh, first responders, essential workers come in and file complaints with GFT? Yeah, or have you already? Rep represents kind of a, a big challenge. Why do you guys uh, sue? I, how come nobody sues anybody? Are you standing anybody? up an online portal? <laughs> you guys have no idea how complicated that is. Um, we're talking about violations of rules and regs, subject to agreements procedures. Then the AG's office will argue it's not subject to the grievance procedure. Right, yeah. But when you get to court, the court's going to say, did you exhaust your grievance procedures? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, and, and there's no class action. So everybody has to do it independently, which means I'm looking at 12,000 individual grievances if all employees were to file. And come Monday, if she sends everybody back, all employees are going to be on this list. Oh, my goodness. So, again, are you standing up some kind of online portal for people to file? something uh or they just right email now, you or GFT? yeah there's, there's a lot of communications between various parties on you know how best to address this and i really think um our, our legislature is the key we had unanimous support for bill 326 i'm asking our senators to continue with that unanimous support and override the veto i do not believe public employees need to be furloughed that that is just a retaliatory comment from mm -hmm. the governor, but that there is sufficient money. There's more. She's been provided more money than the cost of the COVID so far. 
Wow, pretty strong, Robert. Well, we got to be, right? Yeah, I mean, look what we're up against. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, clearly the governor has all the powers. He has superpowers right now. Yeah. But I, I want to go to what you said about um, the threat, that were, the implied threat that, oh, okay, if we're going to pay this $36 million, then we're going to have to furlough and lay off these people, and guess what? It's going to be the legislature's fault, because we told you. No, it's not going to be the legislature's fault. That's going to be a decision the governor makes, and a decision the governor is going to be held accountable for. Mm-hmm. Right, but they're going to spin it like, oh, we only had to do this because these senators, pesky senators... Well, yeah, yeah, I can't help that. They'll probably spin yeah. it and make me responsible. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't got to be held accountable to the voters, so I don't know. I don't think you've got anything to worry about. Robert? I, I, in a way, you know, I do. I'm accountable to my members. Right, right, yeah. But, I mean, people here, you're trying to do the, the right, what's right, so it's pretty well, sure you got the backing. Yeah, 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 we don't change the rules of the game in the middle of the game. Mm-hmm. We, we learn that as children. Okay. Well, senators are meeting virtually at uh, was it four o'clock today? Yeah. And I think uh, they were talking about this might be brought up. Are you, Are you planning on writing to the legislature? Are you in contact with? Uh, I know you mentioned Senator St. Augustine. Anyone else? Is there going to be something official on a GFT letterhead maybe coming out? Well, we've had we've had a lot of success with what I call our network. So we're going to go ahead and continue to uh, rely on our network um, and ask that everybody do their part. And let's try and get this done. Um, go, senators. You know, the ball's in your court. Um, I, I think everybody agrees, you know, what's the right thing to do except for our governor. So, mm-hmm. you know, let's go ahead and do what we have to do and get the law in place. Say that law, though, is not overridden and nothing's done. What about just the issue with the double pay that's already due? Yeah, so that's what our attorney is for. How do you go about suing the government of Guam or getting a writ of mandate to compel the government to pay wages owed? Um, Department of Labor, what are the penalties for people who have a failure to pay wages to employees when owed? Um, you know, there, there, there's, a, there's a number of legal considerations there. And, you know, everybody's going to be owed a different amount. We don't know. Well, we do know, I guess. We could figure out who all the people are who are owed. Um, but I, I think something like a class action lawsuit, rid of mandamus, we'll, we'll see. I haven't spoke to the attorneys yet. Okay. Why don't you guys just do some videos? You know, Governor Lou didn't give you your pay. It was a pandemic. You were out there responding, but you didn't get your pay because the governor didn't want you to get your double pay. I'll, I'll make that recommendation, but we got to find somebody better looking to be in the video. I'm pretty sure you got <laughs> some pretty hot uh, first responders out there who would be more than willing to... <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, Robert, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All thank right. you for all your help. You guys mm-hmm. have been wonderful. Appreciate it. Wash Take your care. hands. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Robert Koss. Man, wow. I'm just um, impressed with what he had to say because I'm always on him, you know, with there's so many issues, and I cover a lot of this the government employee stuff, and so when we get that personnel action that is, or the way they did Linda Hogan, I'm always just like, come on, Robert, you got anything to say? GFT, GFT. So I'm glad that they came out. And those are pretty strong words. Mm-hmm. Pretty strong words. How do you spin? Legislature, it's in uh, <laughs> your, the ball's in your court. And they're going in, I think it said 4 o'clock, right? Did I say 4 o'clock that the rules committee's meeting? They have to approve how they're going to do virtual meetings, but they're going to meet virtually at 